What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. In this video, I thought I'd just share a quick tip on creating realistic materials and textures inside of Blender. Recently, we've been updating our City Builder 3D asset-based add-on for Blender with new procedural materials for better workflows using our kits. And in the process of creating these procedural materials, it got me thinking about how we perceive a material to be realistic in the first place. So as you can see here, this is one of our City Builder 3D assets with a new procedural brick material on it. And uh, you can see here that uh, when we zoom in, uh, pretty close here you can see that there's some pretty good resolution and displacement on the asset itself here and of course I'm rendering this out in EV right now it looks much better in cycles as well with some real uh, displacement and everything but it's clear to me that the resolution up close is still really good but what I found in working with these procedural materials is it's not always the small scale detail and the resolution itself but often the large scale detail that makes the difference in making something look realistic so as you can see here we have these kind of patches of uh, lighter brick all over our city builder asset here and uh, I'll just go to the shading tab here really quick and uh, this is our node setup for the bricks itself and I'm not going to get into the specifics of the node setup itself but pretty much what it is is we're taking a brick texture and uh, overlaying a variety of different other uh, noise textures and bore noise to create cracks and discoloration in different areas but um, the last thing that I added that in my opinion really brought it together was this uh, discoloration that's kind of this large-scale detail that looks uh, pretty random from a distance anyway. So what I've done here is I've taken a noise texture and a Voronoi texture and I plugged it through a color ramp and then mixed it into a mix shader and used that noise data to mix our material with some tan spots overlaid on top of our bricks here. So as you can see here, if I take this away from our factor and the factor is down at zero, to me this is a much more boring uh, brick material and it looks a little bit more computer generated and uh, not having that large scale detail so up close it might look really nice with uh, lots of resolution but resolution isn't the most important thing in my opinion a lot of the times it's just the relative randomness when you look at these assets from a distance so as you can see when we plug it back in here this uh, to me is gonna look a little bit nicer and more uh, realistic from a distance, which is what we created this asset-based add-on for to create those background set extensions and populate your world, enhancing it in different ways. So uh, as you can see here, I can adjust a few of the settings here to show what we're working with. And I might actually go to, uh, well, I'll keep it in Eevee for now and show you cycles at the end, but uh, we can change you know, the color of this overlay so it's not quite as noticeable maybe, or we can make it, you know, very white or you know we could even it might require some tweaking of the specularity as well but you could make it like a green color and darken it down a little bit and maybe even make it like a moss type look and this is a little bit too saturated i think but uh you know you could play around with the specularity as well i like the tan just because i feel it's a little bit more natural with our bricks so i'm going to keep it for the sake of this demonstration here and what we can do here is just adjust our noise or voronoi texture and kind of, you know, position the noise in different ways just by changing the scale. You know, if we increase the scale a lot, the detail in your uh, resolution might get higher, but it doesn't obviously look as realistic because it's so random that it doesn't appear random anymore. So if we bring down the scale, it's gonna give us the larger scale detail actually. So something like this is actually adding discoloration on our bricks and uh, to me, it makes it look much better. And as you can see here, this is being rendered out in Eevee, but we can also switch this over to Cycles and uh, get an even better looking result. And now as you can see here, the full detail of all that displacement is showing uh, with our displacement map as well. And the cool thing with procedural workflows is that you can overlay as many of these random textures as you like to create both large and small scale detail. And then you can plug those into, uh, you know, specularity and stuff. Like for example, if you did want to add moss, you might want to make that look a little bit slippery for example so you could plug that into the roughness value of your principled BSDF shader and get a pretty interesting result but anyways guys just a short quick tip video for you today I hope this video was helpful as always feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below and I will see you in the next video